Hi, I'm Ben and I'm going to talk about this. So we know that MS is a chronic autoimmune disease of which the cause is unknown, but there are several well-known genetic loci and there are several well-known environmental risk factors such as childhood obesity, infectious mononucleosis and smoking. But even considering all these risk factors together accounts for a very small fraction of MS risk. So where is the missing risk? One possibility is that it's accounted for by gene environment interactions the situation in which genetic variants have an enhanced or diminished effect in the presence or absence of particular environmental exposures. So what did we do? Well, we used UK Biobank, a massive longitudinal UK-based cohort study. And first, we conducted a large case control study to validate several well-known environmental exposures associated with MS. And then we used this cohort to probe gene environment interactions. So firstly, as you can see here, we validated the role of several well-established risk factors for MS, specifically smoking before the age of 20, age at Menarche, and being uh, of larger than average body size, age 10. And then we developed polygenic risk scores. So we did this using external weights from the IMSGC meta-analysis, the most recent discovery uh, summary statistics that were published. And we divided the cohort into a training set and a test set. So in the training set, we evaluated the performance of various scores made using the clumping and thresholding approach. And we quantified their performance using the nagel kirka sudawar squared metric. You can see that on the left here. On the right, we then validated the optimal score, both for a score including the MHC region and excluding the MHC. And we validated the scores in the remainder of the cohort, so the remaining 70%. And you can see that people in the highest deciles had a substantially increased risk of MS compared to people in the lowest decile. And you can also see that the histograms are quite nicely separated over, uh, although clearly there's significant overlap between the two. And that's why polygenic risk scores are not useful here in the clinic. So then we used those optimal PRS scores, which we know are valid and we know predict MS disease status in the training sets. We use them to try and demonstrate gene environment interactions. So we can think about interaction on the multiplicative scale. That is where the risk, if you're exposed to two risk factors, exceeds that what you'd expect if they simply multiplied together. And we can think about additive interaction, which is where the risk in people who are exposed to both risk factors exceeds what you would expect if you just added together the, the absolute risk difference. So the attributable proportion is one way of quantifying the additive interaction. And as you can see from this graph on the right, we found significant interaction on the additive scale between both the MHC PRS and the PRS excluding the MHC region uh, and childhood body size. So that is telling us that the effect of childhood obesity on MS risk is exaggerated in the presence of a high prior genetic risk for MS. And that's a novel and very exciting finding. Just to illustrate that, we then calculated the odds ratios for MS if you're exposed to childhood obesity or not, in the highest PRS decile and the lowest decile. So you can see the uh, red line is the bottom PRS decile and the blue line is the uh, top PRS decile. So you can see that for people who are in the top decile, just down here, their risk if they're in the top decile of getting MS, if they're, uh, if they're overweight as a child, is substantially increased. And in fact, childhood obesity does not seem to be a significant risk factor for MS in this lowest decile group. And that just illustrates the finding quite nicely. So then we try to localize the signal by doing something called a genome-wide interaction study. And that's similar to a GWAS, but rather than looking for the individual genotypic effects of each variant, what we're looking at is we're looking at the interaction term. So we're looking at the interaction term between uh, the genotype at each individual SNP and childhood obesity. And essentially we're testing the null hypothesis that that interaction term is equal to zero. And what you can see is that Unfortunately, we didn't find any loci that reached significance, but interestingly, this methodology is not quite there yet. You can see from the test statistics that actually the p-values are all quite deflated. But nevertheless, we found some interesting loci that we're probably going to follow up on. So you can see the lead locus here on chromosome 7, uh, which is in the region of uh, various transcription factors uh, and, and is quite uh, heavily enriched for um, enhancer sites, uh, particularly in adipose tissue. So this is biologically quite interesting, and we're going to be doing a lot more work looking into this. So with some conclusions, well, we've replicated several well-known environmental risk factors for MS. 
We've shown that a polygenic risk score for MS is valid in this cohort. It predicts MS disease status and it interacts with childhood obesity. That is, the effect of childhood obesity is exaggerated in the presence of a high gen genomic risk for MS. That's very exciting. So in terms of future directions, we need to replicate this in other cohorts. We need to localize which genes and variants account for this effect. And we need to demonstrate the validity of PRS in prospective cohorts as well, rather than retrospective cohorts like this. So thank you very much to the team who've helped me a lot with all of this, to Ruth, who's my main supervisor, to uh, Alistair, you can see there being a COVID hero, um, Gavin, who you probably all know very well, John Bestwick, this is the best uh, picture I could find of him on the internet, uh, but who really helped with a lot of the stats, uh, and Dan Balletta, who's an upcoming uh, junior doctor and is, is probably going to be uh, a neurologist, so watch this space. Thank you very much for listening. Here's my Twitter, here's my email, and here's the GitHub for all the code if you want to try and replicate this. Uh, and if you, if you want to get in touch, it would be great to try and um, work together and, uh, and develop some of these findings. Thank you.